This week's edition of Pendragon Recap is sponsored by Pendra Community Hospital, a proud supporter and official physical therapy provider of Pendragon Athletics. High-scoring football games, Pender was the place to be Friday night as fans witnessed a thriller between the host Pendragons and the Bloomfield Bees. The Bees got off to a great start going ahead 22 to nothing within the first few minutes of the game after a long run, pick six, and this 24-yard touchdown pass from Quinn O'Brien to Tim Broders. But the Dragons would rally as senior quarterback Benny Oliver would connect with fellow senior Devin Kalp downfield on this long pass to set up Pender's first score of the night, with Oliver punching it in from two yards out moments later. Bloomfield responded by marching down the field to regain its three-score lead, but on the ensuing kickoff, Oliver took the ball at his own three-yard line, saw an opening down the Pender sideline, and proceeded to sprint 77 yards for another touchdown to cut the deficit. The scoring didn't stop in the second quarter, as Oliver hooked up with Kalp once again for Pender's first passing touchdown of the evening. Kalp would finish with 123 yards on the night on seven receptions, with two of them going for six. At that point, PHS only trailed by nine. Bloomfield's O'Brien would have a response for that, however, as he scampered into the end zone from 26 yards out to extend the lead once again. But Pender's Mark Dunn had an answer as well taking this handoff 15 yards across the goal line for another Dragon touchdown. On Bloomfield's next drive, O'Brien would show his elusiveness and field awareness as he escaped a few would-be tacklers in order to find a receiver waiting in the middle of the field, who would finish off the play for a 47-yard score. Penders Oliver would cap off the first half of scoring with his final rushing TD of the night, this time from 9 yards out. At halftime, the Penn Dragons trailed by just 6 points, 42-36. After how the first 24 minutes played out, fans were anxious to see what the second half had in store. Pender would fumble the pigskin away on the kick return, but was able to get it back when Devin Saul jumped on this loose ball. That set up a drive that culminated in this 22-yard field goal from AK to bring the Dragons within three, the closest margin of the night. But moments later on the kickoff, controversy ensued. Was his knee down or not? You can judge for yourself. The officials said it was not, so Bloomfield's Cody Beckman was able to race 70 yards for a touchdown on this kick return to once again make it a two-possession game. The Bees added another score early in the final period, but the Dragons still had a lot of fight in them. For the second time, Oliver found Kalp in the end zone, though number 24 would have to wrestle the ball away from this Bee defender in the tie-up. The ref granted Pender the touchdown, much to the delight of the players in red. Benny Oliver had a record-setting night through the air, throwing for 205 yards on 15 completions, which broke the previous school record of 188 passing yards in a game. But that just wasn't enough, as Bloomfield scored one more time before sealing the deal with this interception. The final score? Bloomfield 60, Pender 46. Pender head coach Josh Warren talked with us on Monday about the game, and Pender's next opponent, Creighton, who the Penn Dragons will host this Friday at 7 p.m. Pender head coach Josh Warren talking about the uh, game on Friday night, a 60 to 46 loss to Bloomfield at home. Coach, your thoughts on this very close game? Oh, I thought the boys played well. I mean, we were down 22 to nothing, and they, they came back. We had it within five points, I think, at halftime, and had it within eight during the fourth quarter. So, I mean, I'm proud of the kids for not giving up and not laying down. I mean, they fought the whole game, and it was just unfortunate that things didn't work out our way. The game kind of started similar to the GACC game the prior week where uh, the team picked off uh, Benny Oliver's pass and goes and brings it in for six. That when you go down you know, by a few touchdowns early, do, do things kind of start to go off the wheels but did, or did you ever lose confidence? Oh yeah, I was, I mean, it's, you know, anytime you go down 22 to nothing in the first quarter, it's, you know, you kind of have those, those thoughts are in the back of your head. but. You know, I'm just glad that the kids, you know, stuck with it and fought till the very end. I mean, so that was good to see that they didn't lay over. 
definitely a credit to your players to be able to come back to bring it within three, I believe, during the third quarter was the closest it was, 42-39, be able to fight their way back. And we were able to see during that game that the offense is working, and at times the defense was able to get some good stops. Going forward um, to face you know, some of these tough teams, especially next week with Creighton down the line, how do you... Um, you know, build off that success that you were able to stop them at points. How do you able to do that the entire game? Well, you know, I don't know. Um, Creighton's a very good team. Watching them on film, they're very fast. Um, so we're going to have a lot of adjustments to make, um, especially with our two middle linebackers going to be out this week. So, you know, that's something that we're going to have to kind of experiment with. We have a JV game today up in Allen. We're going to take a look at some kids. And um, so those right, right now, that's kind of our main concerns is just trying to find two filler you know two kids that will replace those two on defense as well as in our backfield so now who are those players that are out uh jacob Seabody and mark dunn okay what are their injuries uh mark hyper extended his knee and jacob broke his collarbone on the very last play of the game okay well still talking about the bloomfield game we, you know we saw how you got uh, down a little bit um I guess, talk about the strengths. You, I know you were running a lot of hurry up and it seemed to catch them off guard a little bit. Um, do you think that will be something you, you know, focus on a little more going forward? Does that hurry up offense kind of catch the defense off guard? Oh, we've been practicing that you know, since day one because that's kind of something that I wanted to try to implement. Um, obviously it works well, you know, get kids done, I mean tired. I think the kids were saying during halftime how much better condition we were than what they were. Um, and just you know, like I said, we get down 22 points. It's just something you can't come over, can't overcome. I mean, in a, going forward with it, it, it just depends on what the team who are playing. You know, if it's going to benefit us to slow it down, or if we're going to benefit us to keep it, you know, up tempo. Um, I think definitely we found some some good things that we can do with our passing game. Um, we knew, you know, with, with Benny being our quarterback, we knew that we had something special there because he's got a, you know, he's got a good arm. He's he's a very talented kid. So we just we're trying to put the our best kids in the best situation in order for us to win. But. Next contest is against another ranked team. You faced their second one, I believe, in um, your opening three games. Um, they've outscored their opponents 140 to six. Does that uh, kind of scare you a little bit? Uh, you know, with with how things turn out in the first game, do you, do you or do you just well, put we, that all out? We just worry about what we can do. We don't worry about you know what the other team has done. What you know, that's why you play the games. You don't just just because they're two and zero and one hundred and forty some to six doesn't mean we're going to lay out. We're going to lay down. I mean, that's one thing I ask for my kids um, is to fight to the very end. You know, even when we're playing Guardian Angels and we're getting beat pretty handily, they were still fighting. Um, they still want to succeed. So that's you know, in a situation like that, that's the most I can ask of them. And as long as they keep playing hard and you know, or um, just giving it their all, that's all I'm going to ask from them. And this is no shot to your team or anything, but if you guys do pull off a victory, you'll probably consider it a huge upset, and hopefully that happens. So yep. good luck, Coach, this week. All right, thank you. The Pender High volleyball team continued its winning ways by sweeping Loganview on the road Tuesday evening, 28-26, 25-23, and 25-22. The Lady Pendragons are now 5-3, and three, heading into a full slate of matches in the coming week. Head coach Ashley Bessmer hopes her team can keep playing with the fire that's led to success early on this season. After Thursday night's home match against Wakefield, Pender will host a triangular with Guardian Angel Central Catholic and Scribner Snyder this Saturday at 5.30. The Pender cross-country runners just keep getting faster and faster, even against tougher competition. Competing twice within a four-day span, the Pendragons first competed last Thursday at the Hardington Invite, a 5,000-meter race that brought out the best in the PHS Harriers. The boys finished third overall, with Matt Urbanek and Austin Pearson earning medals for finishing 7th and 11th, respectively. Both girls medaled as well for Pender, as Danny Rutar and Lee Hess took 13th and 14th place, respectively. Coach Dusty Kruzmark was shocked with how much his runners had improved upon their times from the first meet of the year. He didn't think their times would be so good this early in the season. Pender had a tougher time on Monday during the Loganview invite, where the boys finished sixth behind larger schools like Boystown, Arlington, and Columbus Lakeview. 
There were no individual medalists for either the Pender boys or girls, but Cruzmark attributes that to the large number of participants from the bigger schools. Urbanic was again the top finisher for the Pender boys with the 21st place finish, and Hess had the top finish for the girls, also placing 21st. Pender's next competition will be the North Bend invite this coming Thursday at 4.30 in North Bend. Down a player due to illness, the Pender High girls golf team was unable to turn in a great score in the team standings, but senior Shelby Anderson still had a pretty good day on the links, finishing 16th out of 65 golfers at Saturday's Pierce Invite. Anderson carded a 103 to lead the Pen Dragons. Pender's final team score was 1405 after an additional 1000 was tacked on for not being able to field a full team due to the absence of Alyssa Weiss. Next up for the girls is a triangular on Thursday with Stanton and West Point Beamer at Twin Creeks Golf Club north of Pender. The gals will then compete in a duel against Oakland Craig on Monday at 4 p.m. in Oakland.